Hi folks, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a overview of an MVP for a Kotlin self-service repo with CICD setup. So from soup to nuts, a um, new developer comes in and requests uh, a new uh, Kotlin um, application skeleton. Uh, so what, what will happen here, this will go through our internal developer portal, IDP. It'll use an onboarding workflow to automatically set up uh, the repo, the CI/CD pipelines, uh, so that that developer can uh, really get uh, within five minutes to their first pull request um, on, on their code base or their service. So let's dive into it. Let's have a look at it. We're going to go pretty deep uh, and see the, the different components here. Uh, so first of all, this is the IDP uh, piece that you see in front of you. And uh, really the key part that we're going to focus on today is the self-service. So we have a look in here. We can see we've got uh, a template that I've created here called Create New Kotlin Service and Onboard to CICD. So this will be how we request uh, our, our new um, CICD service. Um, probably uh, the best way to demonstrate this is to first um, going to provision the service. So I'm going to request the service and then we can dive into the details that make up uh, how I did that. And then we'll switch persona again and make our first pull request as a developer. So as a developer, I've come in, um, I want my new Kotlin service. Again, this can be a bare bones uh, a service uh, that's going to get that's templated for me. So I'm going to choose it. Um, my owner here, I am Greg. Um, I'm going to call this one Pet Clinic. So uh, Pet Clinic New. And I'm going to, my organization is default. Now, uh, you'll see in a moment when I show you how we create these forms. So these can be as detailed as you like. Um, I've really oversimplified it here for the purposes of the MVP. Uh, so I'll go ahead, review and request. And immediately this will kick off our orchestration pipeline that I've uh, built. So let's have a look at that pipeline and see what it's going to do. So we'll see the first step here uh, in the orchestration of onboarding this new service is it should first of all uh, clone down our repository. So our repository of our, our templated repository um, of Pet Clinic. If we have a look at what that looks like, this is it here. This is our, our template. Um, this would be our bare ba uh, bone standard in the organization with Kotlin that once uh, once we've got it up and up and running, a developer can immediately start making pull requests and adding functionality and so on. So it's going to clone that first. Um, so we'll see that in a second. So there we go. Uh, we've cloned it down. We've created uh, the repo. So we've created the, um, our new repo, Pet Clinic, in uh, GitHub. Uh, we're creating our, our catalog items. Um, so that's really how we see these items in IDP. Registering it. And now what we're going to use is uh, our Terraform to not only provision. Um, so we've created this new new templated uh, repository for the, the developer, but we're using Terraform to provision a new project and CRCD pipeline and whatnot in, um, in, uh, in Harness for us uh, that can utilize and build that new new repository. So there we've, the onboarding is finished. So let's have a look and see uh, so some of these components. So uh, we should first of all have seen, we should see a new repository called Picklink. Yep, there it is there. This is the clone of uh, the template. So this is our templated version, Picklink new. This is the new repo for the, for the developer. We also have another repo, which this is really our Terraform for that we utilize in the pipeline to do the provisioning. So let's have a look in detail at, at, at what we have in that Terraform. So here we can see um, we're using the Harness Terraform provider. Uh, it's fully documented, you can see here, um, uh, and quite extensive for anything you want to do in, in Harness. Uh, our preferred method of provisioning in, in Harness. Um, so let's go back and have a look at, at Terraform. So the first thing we're doing is we're creating a project. You can see it's uh, templatized this resource so that will be the pet clinic project uh, we're going to create a service the service is our manifest uh, in this case uh, this is a kubernetes style deployment so this is um, a manifest we'll look at that in a minute uh, with our um, 
repo based uh, YAMLs uh, for uh, the deployment YAML and the um, uh, the uh, the values override. Uh, now you can apply this to any construct in Harness deployments. Uh, this is just seems this is just a Kubernetes one. It can be EC2, Lambda, etc. Um, you can use our GitOps functionality as well. And you can see there's a templatized um, service. Uh, we're creating an environment as well, so a development environment. Uh, um, and you can see the resources templatized there. Creating the infrastructure, which is the Kubernetes cluster association to that environment. Um, we're then creating our pipeline. This is the end-to-end -end CICD pipeline. And then finally, we're creating a trigger um, from our repo uh, to our CICD pipeline. So let's have a look at what that looks like in Harness. So if we go into Harness, we'll have a look at, and we should see we've got a new project app, Pick Clinic New. This is the newly provisioned project. We can see we've created our service automatically. We can click into that service. We can have a look at it. So this is what the Terraform was creating. So here's our deployment YAML. You can see it's associated with our repository. You can see the, the values YAML also in the repository that we're referencing. You can see we're also um, associated with ECR, connected to ECR for our, uh, for our artifacts. Um, so that's all been set up there. We can also see our environment development has been set up. We can see the infrastructure uh, has been associated with it uh, and the cluster. So we've now uh, fully set up um, our, our pipelines there. We can also see the actual pipeline itself. So let's have a look at that. So we've got a build stage, we've got a deployment stage. This was all again dynamically uh, built by Terraform. And you can see we're using a Harness Cloud, uh, which is, um, uh, is really nice to use for our builds. Uh, we can use either Kubernetes or local VMs or, or the cloud I'm using the cloud because it's faster and, and uh, has raw, raw bare metal power there for us. Um, and I can see my workflow uh, where I'm running my unit tests and then I'm running my build and push to ECR. Uh, these are the steps again that I've created and templatized. And then the actual deployment. So we're going to do a canary deployment and then once that's successful, the full, full run out. Okay, so let's test if this works, right? So um, as a developer, I should be able to now do a pull request against my repo and this should all just work. Uh, and that would be my five minutes uh, to to uh, productivity from my service catalog. So we'll go to our new pet clinic um, repository that we see here and we're going to make a change. So I'm going to come in and I'll just make a simple change. Like I'll just change the, the readme and I'll call this readme v1. I'll go commit change. I'll create a branch for this commit. Uh, okay, and I'm going to create my pull request. Okay, and uh, we're ready to merge. So we'll merge. And we're good. Now this should kick off our pipeline. So let's go have a look. And there we go, our pipeline's executing. Let's watch it execute. So here we go, it's doing the build. Remember this is all was dynamically provisioned from, um, from the start of that request in the IDP. Um, so all the plumbing that you see here all was driven by that that form that we we saw while we're waiting for this to kick in let's have a look at what the uh, definition of that form looks like um, so we'll go over to one of our repos here and we can see our catalog item here and we can see it's pretty easy to define these forms you can see we had the owner there the new repo name um, and again, you can have these as drop downs, uh, different, uh, different um, uh, variable types. Um, you associate the pipeline here, and then you pass in the parameters for your input set. So the things that come, come from the, the actual form get passed directly into the pipeline as variables. And obviously you can do, have as many of those as you like. So uh, you can make this as simple, as complicated as you like, is really the message here. Um, so again, it's, it lives in the repo along with um, our deployment YAML, our values YAML, so pretty much everything can live in the repo or separate repos 
uh, if you like it just just happened to be this is the way that I set it up for this this particular MVP um, so here we go we are cloning the code base down we're running our user unit tests now this being a Kotlin app um, this will uh, run Gradle so this is should take a little while to execute uh, and then we'll start the build and push of the application yeah, you can see we're doing the build and push of the application now to uh, ECR. And you can actually see our ECR registry here that it's pushing to. And we've finished the build and push. So now we move into the deployment phase and uh, we'll see we're going to deploy a canary here. Again, all automatic uh, once the canary is successfully deployed you can naturally obviously have testing steps there and so on the, for this MVP I haven't added any um, we'll remove the canary and then we'll do the full rollout across the cluster um, so that that again we can see working uh, from our MVP and we've completed our deployment to uh, the cluster so um, that was a good example, again, of a, a developer coming in, requesting their service uh, for the first time and being able to do a pull request in, in five minutes uh, to be able to add new functionality and roll that out uh, into, uh, into the development or production environments.